because it does seem very strange that there is still no sign of any charges or of them being released. Hi, Pierce. We're certainly a lot better off today than the last time I was on your show. Um, as you recall, back then, the Tate brothers were still detained in a Romanian jail cell. Um, now they have been released on house arrest. So relative to that, you know, they're, they're doing much better now and we've taken a big step in the right direction. However, uh, this month actually marks the one year since this investigation first began. And the fact that they're still on house arrest and the fact that their restraint and their liberty, uh, their liberty is still restrained and they're not free to move about the way anybody else would while this uh, very prolonged investigation continues is uh, obviously substantially troubling and frustrating to them. So even though a few weeks ago we took a big step in the right direction, we're still not all the way there. And we are we're looking forward to the day that the Romanian authorities decide that they won't be uh, that they conclude the investigation and decide that they won't be seeking an indictment in this case. What are the rules of the house arrest? I only asked because before I came on air, I noticed that Tristan Tate uh, tweeted me several times about tonight's show, actually. Um, is that him? Are they allowed to tweet personally, the, the two brothers? They are. The only real restrictions that they have, other than the fact that they're confined to their house, is that they can't communicate with either the two other women who also, like them, are on house arrest, who are being investigated alongside them in this matter, and any other witnesses who have been mentioned in the file. Beyond that, there are no other restrictions as far as uh, communication with friends or family or having visitors, as well as social media activity. There's obviously been a, a, an enormous amount of global coverage of this. Um, and obviously they remain innocent until or if they're ever charged or proven guilty. How are they actually doing uh, themselves? I mean, it's a weird condition to, to be living under house arrest. It is. Again, it's, it's relative to where they were a few weeks ago. They are doing much better, of course. Um, however, the three months in jail certainly took a toll on them. And I know Andrew has told me he right now has a lot of trouble sleeping. He can't sleep for more than two hours um, a night. And, you know, it, it really took a toll. So they're struggling with the process and what they've been through, but they are now focused mostly on just regaining, they believe a strong, uh, bo a strong body is a strong mind. They're back to their training and fitness and health and focusing on those things and trusting their attorneys and the process to play out and for them to eventually clear their names. The, the court of public opinion has been, depending on what you read, uh, particularly on social media, but obviously they have this huge uh, platform, each of them, it's either been brutally savage against them, prejudging everything and assuming their guilt, or it's been the complete opposite, that they are the victims of a shocking miscarriage of justice. Um, can they get any kind of fair trial, even if it was to come to that, given the enormous amount of coverage? Well, we're certainly hoping it doesn't come to that. But yes, all of those things that you said really um, do jeopardize somebody in a, in a case like this, always these high profile cases. Um, we believe oftentimes the defendant can't get a fair trial because there is such, unfortunately, a presumption of guilt in these types of cases. There is a lot of misinformation spread prior to the case actually being heard and opinions are formed. And a lot of times, again, it's not based on the actual evidence. So I think it is very challenging to have a fair trial under circumstances such as, uh, such as the Tate brother case here. However, again, we are optimistic that the evidence is not going to support an indictment and that it won't come to that. If it does go to trial, would it be a jury trial or just a judge? A judge. The, I think since we last spoke in the last several weeks, actually, three British women have come forward to say they were abused and sexually assaulted uh, by Andrew Tate and a crowdfunding to sue him for compensation. They're all in their 20s or early 30s. They worked as webcam models for Andrew Tate, they say, in Luton from 2013 onwards, claiming they were abused, poorly paid and threatened to stop them going to the police. What's your response to that? Well, first, to be clear, there is no there's no new lawsuit and there certainly these are not new allegations. These are old allegations from 2014 and 2015 that uh, I would seriously, you know, I think there's questions about the timing and motivation as to why this is now being brought up. I certainly don't think it's a coincidence that 
you know, right after they've been released on house arrest that this has now again come up. But just to be clear, what what this case right now is, it's three anonymous women who have not come forward with their identities are seeking crowd, crowd uh, funding and they're seeking, um, I think, 50,000 pounds to begin with. And I believe they've raised at this point a little bit over 8,000 pounds. And this is so that they could sue the sue Andrew Tate for compensation. So they're basically asking the public to fund their efforts to get money from Andrew Tate. And what's bizarre about this, um, aside from the fact that these same allegations were previously investigated by the UK authorities who decided that there was no evidence and it was su not sufficient to pursue charges against Andrew Tate, but putting that aside, What's strange to me as an attorney, certainly in my experience, cases of this type are often brought by attorneys on what we call a contingency fee basis, which means that the attorney, if they believe in the case, files the lawsuit, uh, prosecutes it, and then from the monies that they recover for their client, they take a percentage of that. So to me, it's very strange that instead of pursuing the case like that, which would typically be done, they're asking the, for the public for donations to fund this attempt for these anonymous women, again, to make money from Andrew Tate. And I think it's really important to remember cases like Eleanor Williams, which recently I know got a lot of attention. And I saw your interview with one of the men who uh, Eleanor had falsely accused. And there are cases where women go to crazy and extreme lengths. I know in that case she had created fake social media profiles. She had sent herself, um, you know, fake messages that were reported initially to be evidence. She went so far as to purchase a hammer and to self-inflict severe injuries to Yeah, herself. I mean, look, that, just to jump into it, we're running out of time. That was an outrageous case, and she was a total fantasist and a very evil one at that. I think, look, to be, to be fair to your clients, they are innocent until proven guilty. They've not been charged. This has been going on for a year. They've been held in prison for month after month after month. They're now effectively under uh, sort of home prison. Uh, and you do think at some stage that out of fairness and justice, they are either going to be charged or, or released. And um, we'll see what happens. But I think next week you're expecting to get an update, right? We will get an, uh, an update yeah. next week because they can only extend this house arrest for a total, combined with the three months that they already served, it's a total of six months in Romania. So okay. if they seek an application, it will be made next week. Well, hopefully we can talk to you again after that development. Tina Glandian, thank you very much.